Let's go to our Father in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We celebrate new life in Jesus Christ. Father, we, we lift up to you Wade Clark as, as he publicly professes his faith in Jesus Christ. And Father, as we continue through this worship service, anoint every part of it, the prayers, the singing, the preaching, and most importantly, the hearing. Father, anoint this time. It belongs to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Well, good morning. Good to see you here. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we, we uh, go on to this baptism is that, uh, first of all, if you were visiting with us the first, second, or third time, or we just don't have information on you, we have information cards in the pews. You are invited to fill those out and uh, put them in the offer plate or through the Welcome Center. Also, please remember that we are having our quarterly business meeting this Wednesday I think it's 6.30. I think that's right. 6.30. Show up at 6.30. If it's 7, just hang out and visit. So, and then the week after that, we will start back with our adult classes. Uh, we have a, a Bible, continued Bible study uh, led by C.J. Jones and also uh, Debbie Reed. And we will also have a women's Bible study led by Kim Gertler, the Armor of God. And I'll be teaching the youth on Wednesday night on February 3rd. So, Exciting things. We're getting back to the swing of things. And now uh, we are very excited. This is probably, well, I can't think of a better way to start a worship service than to celebrate new life in Jesus Christ through baptism. This is what we believe about baptism. We believe that a person comes to salvation by asking Jesus Christ into their life to be their Lord and Savior. Baptism is a, well, it, it, it's commanded of Jesus Christ to follow through on, but it is not your salvation. It is a professing of your salvation uh, for, for the believer and also for the people that witness it. It is a stirring in our hearts for those of us that witness it because it reminds us of new life in Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ continues to do in our lives. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I present to you our new brother in Christ, Wade Clark. Wade? Wade is the son of Wayne and Jerry Clark, the, the grandson of Nate Crouch, and of course Jennifer Crouch as well. I will tell you that uh, Nate has been praying for his grandson for a long time, speaking to him about faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, about a month or two ago, I was able to visit with Wade, and, and, and frankly, folks, it, it was just kind of just kind of follow up on everything that the Holy Spirit and also Nate, Nate had already done. And I guess he just wanted to make sure everything was cross-examined and understood and done right. But anyway, uh, the young man was ready to pray to receive Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. His verse is John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Wade, I'm excited about your profession of faith in Jesus Christ. Wade, let me ask you two questions. Wade, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you willing to follow him in obedience and discipleship for the rest of your life? Therefore, Wade, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Exciting. Will you all put your masks on and we're going to stand and sing a couple songs this morning to get going, starting with Be Thou My Vision.
song today. Actually, this is not a new song. It's been out for a couple years. How many of you know the song Waymaker? It's very oh, good. Then you're going to help me beat this this morning. If you don't know this song, it's uh, got so many great phrases that you can take with you. Uh, if you want to just listen and learn it today, sing it when you can. There's parts that are lower, parts that are higher. Um, just jump in.
good morning, church. You're gonna give me a second. I gotta catch my breath. That was that took me back to like high school and college. That last song there into the desert of Iraq. I'm one of the best worship songs that I could sing. Um, being over there with uh, with some amazing soldiers. Um, so as we move in a time of prayer and meditation, um, just we remember our, our fellow soldiers, our, our fellow countrymen and women that are that are deployed, that are in harm's way, um, that are still in our nation's capital as well. And uh, just be praying for our nation, from our president um, down to the to the lowest um, local um, authority that we have. Um, just be praying for our leaders in our nation because they we all need more and more of Jesus every day, and we need God's wisdom to be implanted in their hearts and in their minds. Um, and just a reminder, those that are dealing in, uh, with cancer and its treatments in our church, um, Jim Harnard, uh, Maynard Barker, John Clatterball, uh, Tommy Crawford, and then uh, Pastor Mark's friend, uh, Donnie Forson. Just remember um, their family, um, just, just to be that encouragement to them as well. Um, and those that are in, in, our, in our congregation that are in the hospital and dealing with illness, um, Marshall Samuelson is the father of Jennifer Cox, um, Jennifer Fox, sorry about that, I can't see either. Um, he's dealing with Parkinson's and some other health issues as well. I mean, just continued prayers for those in our church that are dealing with COVID and uh, just, just everything that goes along with that as well. And uh, Maynard Barker is having kidney surgery um, this Wednesday, so remember her and uh, just be praying for her as well. And just be praying that, that God uses us in our community, uses us in our, in our vocation, uses us in our family just to carry his gospel, just to carry his truth wherever he calls us to go. Um, just be in prayer for that and just the opportunities just to serve him and uh, just to be willing to go where God has called us to go. So please join me in a time of um, meditation and then I'll close us in a time of prayer. Let's pray. Father God, we are grateful um, and humbled to be in your house this morning, God, to worship you in, in song, God, to worship you through our praise, Lord, to worship you in just giving everything to you, God, we turn everything over to you, God, from our concerns to our praises, Lord, we just lay them at your feet, God, whether we spoke them audibly or inaudibly this morning, God, we, we lay those concerns and we give those praises to you right now. God, we, we pray for our country. Lord, we pray that, that your peace, God, that your wisdom, God, abounds. That above all, God, that your love and forgiveness, God, just overflows in our life. And that those that are around us, God, see you in our life. God, I pray for our church. Lord, I pray for our members, God, that are dealing with COVID and cancer um, and every other disease that, that is um, unfortunately floating around this time of year, God. We just pray for your strength, God, physically. God, we pray for your strength emotionally. God, we pray for your strength spiritually, God, that, that you just use us in mighty ways, God, and that you use us in impactful ways, God, for those that are, that are struggling, God, that, that we are your hands and feet, God, that, that you call us to be. God, we are just grateful again just for the ability and the opportunity to worship freely in your house. God, I was reminded singing this morning, God, that you are our way maker, God, our promise keeper, Lord, but above all, you are our all in all. God, no matter where we're going, what we're doing, um, that, that you are with us. God, we just love you and we thank you, Lord, and just bless the rest of this service. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. We are so lucky this morning because you get to hear Jadelyn Talley, who's going to play for you. Jadelyn grew up here at Memorial. She is currently a freshman at uh, James Madison University studying music education. And she was one of the recipients of the Barbara Atkins Music Scholarship. Uh, Barbara Atkins, if you don't know, was the Minister of Music here for close to 50 years. And um, we honor her by um, helping folks like Jaden to um, get through college. And we're so excited that she can come and share her talent with us today. <laughs>
seeing you and uh, also well, welcome to to her family also came here in support as well uh, and good morning good to be with you this morning in the pulpit here at Memorial Baptist Church uh, you know I I want to first of all thank the uh, baptism committee uh, they do such a great job in fact we have about 25 committees that do all kinds of behind the work behind the scenes work I appreciate them so much but especially the baptism committee today because I asked them to turn up the water just a little bit it was so nice up there I came this far from just staying up there and preaching from there <laughs> can I do that next time would, would you all have a problem with it I just might and we, and we got a couple of more baptisms coming up uh, we because of COVID we've made the decision to uh, to baptize people one time, one person at a time, and and uh, Mary Taylor Burbies is right over there. We're going to baptize her in February, and and also Hunter Childress. So, looking forward to that here in, in the next month. Um, now, I'm going to ask you to look up in the Word of God, uh, Matthew five nine. But I'll be preaching from a number a number of different places in the Bible. And as you're doing that, I've got a story to tell you. There was a church. Man, they had been in conflict for years. So many things back and forth. They, they couldn't even remember where to start, what started all. They were just, it was just tension in the church. And so they had an evangelist come in, and, and he confronted them about the, the dissension. And, and man, the Holy Spirit moved in the congregation. And there was repentance, and, and things just changed there. Well, the next Sunday... They're, they're having the worship service, and they're having a time of celebration of what God has done in their congregation. And the, the first person to stand up was one of the Sunday school teachers, and, and she got up and said, I want you to know that, that in the past I, I've really questioned the, the authority of Scripture, but, but God has spoken to me. I repent of that, and from now on I am going to, to teach uh, Scripture as as, as an errant in the word of God. And the people said, Amen. And the pastor said, Praise God that now only a, the biblical authority will be taught from that Sunday school class. 
And then the chairman of deacons stood up. And the chairman of deacons said, I, I need to confess that, that I've just spread all this dissension and, 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 and fueled up rumors in, in the church, and I repent of that, and I want you to know that from here out I'm going to squash rumors, and I'm only going to speak words of, of encouragement and, and building up the church. And the church said, praise God. And the pastor said, Praise God, now we will have a better sense of, of unity and encouragement in our congregation. And then, and then the treasurer stood up. And the treasurer said, I know that, that people have thought that we've had money problems in the congregation for years. And I want to confess, I want to repent that uh, I, over the past three years, I have embezzled half a million dollars from the church funds. And the church got very quiet and the women looked at the treasure with scowls and the men started to stand up and they balled their fists and some even rolled up their sleeves and the pastor muttered in the, into the microphone I don't think I would have said that <laughs> well this might be one of those Sundays when I, when I look back at what was said on, and say maybe I shouldn't have said that but, but sometimes we've got to say some things that, that are very, very frank so that, that we can, well, so the guy can do some, some, some encouraging, some strengthening in our lives. And um, I want to talk to you about peace this morning. Now, you may think, well, peace, <laughs> Pastor, how can, how can that be a, a problem? I mean, yeah, peace, it's it's their images of, of passivity and, and easygoingness and, and just contentment. But I can tell you that when you address peace, when you address it frankly, peace can be one of the most disturbing subjects that a congregation can deal with. Well, let me go a little bit further. At the beginning of last year, 2020, wasn't that long ago, I felt led of the Lord to speak several sermons about peace. This is before the, the, the COVID crisis and that type of thing. And, and I will tell you, I, I felt led of the Holy Spirit to do that. But also, mentally, I was thinking back to 2016. We were having an election that year. But also, when I look back at 2016 and going a little bit into 2017, folks, I'll just tell you, and, and I, can, I can be honest with you four years later, Man, that was the most difficult year I've ever had in ministry. I mean, it was, it was just a, a time of, of struggle in our, in our church. We'd, we were a couple of years into getting over uh, having a, the same pastor for 41, 42 years, and, and you can expect some, expect some trouble, some adjustment in that. Um, we had some staffing issues. We had some disagreements in the church over things small and great, and there was just a lot of tension in the church. There were people that, that frankly got on the phone and kind of ginned things up a little bit. And, all, and that was what was inside the church. What was outside the church was, of course, the election. 2016, just like 2020, was a very contentious election. I mean, the whole country had their hair on fire during that year, if you remember. And people took what was outside the church and they even brought that tension within the church. So there, there, were, there was tensions within and there was, was tensions without. And frankly, folks, it, it culminated one evening. I'll never forget the date, January 10th, 2017, the night that I thought I had a heart attack. I was watching a movie with Diane, and I will tell you, it was an awful movie. I don't, I don't know why I rented it. I mean, it, it wasn't like rude or evil or, car or coarse or anything. It was, just, it was just dull, okay? Anyway, I was watching that and thinking, surely it's going to get better, and I started just getting uncomfortable. And so I, I, I moved to, to lay down on the couch trying to get some comfort and moving around, and, and I started having some chest pain. And I thought, well, it's just indigestion. So I, I got up and I ate about five Rolaids, and, and that didn't do anything. And and I just, I started having some problems breathing and, and a few other things. And I, while I'm watching this movie, I'm, I'm also looking at my phone and I'm looking at an article that says seven signals of a heart attack and I was having five of them. All right. 
And then, of course, being a man, I thought, well, I've only got 40 minutes left of this movie. Surely it's going to get better. And so I said, well, I'll just watch the movie, and, and if, it, uh, if I'm still feeling bad in 40 minutes, I'll, I'll tell you, talk to Diana. Maybe we'll go to the ER. And I tell you, 40 minutes later, the movie didn't get any better, and I didn't get any better. And so I, I finally said something to Diane, and, and we rushed to the, to the ER, and as I'm sitting in the car and she's driving, I'm thinking, man, I wish I'd gone 40 minutes earlier. I mean, it was getting, getting a little, little scary. And they brought me in, shot me right back in the ER and all this type of thing. And, and of course, to, to, to make a long story short, because there are no short stories in the ER, if you've ever been in the ER, uh, I was fine. It, it was just, a, oh, um, an anxiety attack. In fact, they, did, they run a bunch of numbers, and they tested me out a, a little bit later and found out that my heart was in better shape than I thought it was. That's, that's good news. But, but as I was there and as I was being checked out, the, the, the nurse in the ER, she came back and asked me or said to me, she said, well, Mr. Jones, I've got some good news. You, you don't have any markers in your blood for a heart attack, so we'll be releasing you soon. We want you to, want you to follow up and... And, and have these tests and that test, but, but I think you're in good shape. And then she stopped and she said, Mr. Jones, by the way, what do you do for a living? I didn't want to answer that. I said, well, I'm a, I'm a pastor. And she said, a Baptist pastor? I go, yeah. And then she said, well, my father's a Baptist pastor too. I understand. And I went home. And I could tell you that that was, that was the apex of the problem. That wasn't the end, end of situations. And I, I apologize for saying anything to you about this. Because I will tell you four, four years later, it's a totally different story. I, I will tell you that four years later, we've got relative, I mean, church has never has 100% peace. But we've got relatively peace in this church. This church is much more unified, and I will tell you, it is a pleasure being your pastor. Uh, I, I could tell you how a lot of it was dealt with is, is that we had a number of uh, people in our church just finally stand up and say to other people, stop it. Just, just stop doing that. And they did. And also, it also helped to get a couple of hundred new people into the church, either, either through membership or or uh, through, through attendance and that type of thing. And, and if you're one of those people, I apologize for saying anything because you have no idea what I'm talking about, and, and, and I almost wish it would remain so. We're, we're much more at peace, much more unified than we were. But let me tell you something about peace. And let me tell you something about disrupting peace. If you're a person that seeks to disrupt the peace, here's what happens. And I've, I've seen this. I've served eight churches in 35 years. I can tell you that you end up hurting people that you never intended to hurt. There's people in the, in the, that aren't here in this church because of some of that. And also, the person that you intended to hurt, it usually doesn't work out the way that you intended. And this is why Jesus calls us to be peacemakers. He calls us to be peacemakers because he loves us. And by the way, God loves the church. And he loves the message and the direction of the church. When we're not peacemakers, we violate that. And here's where I go into another place that I may regret saying something again about later, but I can tell you one thing, something that really disturbed me this week, and really has disturbed me for a couple of weeks, is when I saw some of the videos that came out from the invasion of our nation's capital. And I find so many things to be discouraged about that. But what disturbed me the deepest, disturbed me the deepest, was to see the Christian flag both inside and immediately outside the, the, the capital. 
It disturbed me to see signs about God. It disturbed me to see a guy waving around a banner that said Jesus inside the Capitol. And then it disturbed me to see three of the people that transgressed into, I believe it was, it was the House of Representatives. And they all got up there, the three of them, and they gave glory to God that he essentially delivered the capital into their hands. And they even had a prayer praising God for that. And I looked at that and I go, oh my goodness. What, what a perversion of blessed are the peacemakers. I can tell you this. We have a little bit of PR problem with non-believers. Sometimes we, we, we get into power politics instead of seeking the Lord, seeking, seeking what he would have us do through the Gospels. Instead of coming into prayer, we, we, we tend to take action like the rest of the world. And this is why so many people that do not respect God and certainly do not respect us, this is why sometimes we become a barrier to other people coming to know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. That's not what God has called us to be. He called us to be peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God, Matthew 5, 9. To be people of peace. Not only people of peace, but peacemakers. Advocates of peace. People that create peace where there is none. People that bring peace where it is absent. When the world thinks of peacemakers, it tends to think of people in, in high positions of power that are able to, to make treaties or, or uh, to, to get two sides that, that are about to go to war uh, to, to back off and at least have a, have a time of settlement. That's typically what we think about peacemakers. And, and I, I can tell you that there is value in that. But we also know, just looking at history, but also looking at Scripture, that this is a temporary peace. Because we live in a time where there are wars and rumors of wars. And, and we know that in the end times, Jesus said, there will be wars and rumors of wars. Yes, we should, we should hope and pray for, for, for peace among people, peace among nations. But we know that, that we live in a broken creation and any type of peace among nations will be a temporary peace. No, who Jesus was talking to is he was speaking to the crowd. Now keep in mind, this, this comes from the Beatitudes, which was at the Sermon on the Mount. He was preaching from a mountainside, preaching to a large crowd. They were not the Caesars, the governors, the people of power at that time. They were just average people. They, they are not the people that are going to be able to negotiate peace among nations or to force it by force of arms. No, these are people that they, they do have influence. They do have influence in their home. They do have influence in their village. And they also have influences in their places of worship, which for the Jews was the synagogue. He was addressing people like you and me. People that have influence in their home. People that have influence in their community. People that have influence in their places of work. People that have influence in their church. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. This week I've got two principles for that. Next week I'll have three, but let me share with you the, the first of two principles. First of all, principle number one, to be a peacemaker is to serve others. Matthew 20, 28 says, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Last week we ordained three deacons, and I, boy, I tell you, I got so much positive response from many of you saying, what a, what, a, 
What a meaningful experience that was. Thank you for your affirmation on that. And it was a meaningful experience to ordain those three deacons. And one of the things that we stressed during the, the brief time that I talked and, and uh, also uh, what, what we stressed from the, our liturgy and other things in the scripture that was read is that, that deacons are to be people of service. They are not people that, that rule over the congregation. They're not the house of representatives for the congregation. They are people that serve the congregation. And, and we, we elevate, uh, we call people, men and women, in our church that we feel like are, have that gift of service. Not everybody is a great service servant, but we're all called to be servants. Um, Jesus Christ gave us the example of what a servant is. He said that he, he had been called to, to serve. Now, I want you to understand that his mission, God's, Jesus Christ's mission, was to come and die on the cross for our sins and three days later to resurrect uh, so that he had, show that he had power of death so that if you will uh, confess his name and receive him into your life, you will be saved. That was Jesus' mission. But his example, his model was someone of service. Now, I want you to put things into proper perspective and understand this, how big this is. We believe that Jesus Christ was there at the beginning of creation. We believe that Jesus Christ is God. We believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Son being Jesus Christ. It, one God, three different persona. So you are talking about somebody that was there at the creation of the universe. You are talking at somebody, about somebody that has always been. You are talking about somebody that stand, sits at the right hand of, of God the Father interceding for us. You are talking about somebody that will, be, that will rule over the eternal kingdom of God, you're talking about somebody that's, well, a pretty big deal. And yet, while we call Jesus Christ Lord, his model is to be a servant. Uh, a, a word that I and other pastors recently use is, uh, when we describe a Christian is to be a Christ follower. Because sometimes we just kind of blow over the idea of, of being a Christian or it's just, we just don't think about what that means. So sometimes we use different words to describe the same thing to hopefully uh, inspire what it is. And, and so when I say Christ follower, I'm talking about somebody that is, well, follows Christ. That's, that's what a Christian is supposed to do. And even though you have unique personalities and even though you have unique gifts, what is common among all of us is to be Christ followers. If Jesus Christ is the model as a peacemaker, then that is the model for all of us to be servants, to follow him. What does that look like for us today? Well, it means that we need to have the heart of a servant. Now, I will tell you that I, I know people that have the gift of service, but they don't have the heart of a servant. Pastor, how can that be? Well, well so, have you ever been around somebody that, 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 that loves to do things and will do anything for you, but they'll put up an attitude about it? I mean, I, I've, 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 nobody in this church. But, uh, but other churches that I've been in, yes, I've seen that. And, and the shame of that is, is they put in so much effort and it discourages people from being grateful. It, it discourages people from giving glory to, to the Lord for that. Okay? And so that's why it's not only important that you serve, but you have the heart of the servant. That, that, that you have a, a, a gentle, gentleness about, and a, a humbleness about how you follow Christ and how you serve him. That you be a peacemaker in your service, whatever that service is. And secondly, today, pray for others. Reading from Luke 6, 27 through 28.
But I say to you here, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Now, the verse in Luke is, is talking about, is quoting the words of Jesus Christ himself. He tells us to love our enemies, do good, bless those who curse you, and even pray for those who abuse you. Now, that is a tall order, even, even for Christians, because it is, our, it is our nature to pay back evil for evil, or the best maybe we can hope for is justice. And, and, I, and I, I know in our, our legal uh, situation, uh, uh, our code of, of ethics in, in our, our society, that we do have to punish evil and, and those type of things. But when we're talking about individual Christians, how you interact with other Christians, how you interact with the rest of the world, man, Jesus Christ is telling us to love, do good, bless, and pray. You know, the problem with fighting evil with evil or power against and suppress what we consider to be evil, which often we have to do in, in society and culture. But the problem with that is you have a suppression, but you don't have a heart change. Give me an example of that. This summer, the left, many in the left, felt like they had been treated unjustly. So what did they do last summer? Well, many of them protested peacefully, and many others got violent, destroyed property, and occupied places temporarily. In January, many on the right side of politics felt like they had been treated unjustly justly. So what did they, many of them do? Well, most of them protested peacefully, but others reacted violently, destroyed property, and occupied things, that places that they were not supposed to occupy. You see, we're all, regardless of our political position, we're all vulnerable to that. You and I, we were called to be peacemakers. We have the alternatives instead of power politics or force. We have the alternatives of love, do good, bless, and pray. And may I say that while we should do all of these things, my experience is what is most effective is to pray for those who oppress you. Here's a spiritual law that I've experienced and I want to share it with you. I've shared it with you before. But when you pray for somebody that has done you wrong, when you pray for somebody that has oppressed you, you might even hate them. You pray for them long enough. You won't hate them anymore. You pray long enough. God starts to change your heart. You might even find, if you pray for them long enough, that you love them. I've experienced that. And when God changes your heart, all things are possible. Now, they may not change. In fact, they probably won't change. But you'll change. And God will shape you and mold you deeper into the image of Christ. Take you places spiritually that you did not think were possible. Shape you, make you, mold you into a peacemaker. Someone who Jesus Christ himself says is a child of God. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we... Father, these are challenging words to be a peacemaker. Oh, we can 
talk about it, but when it comes down to the nuts and bolts, when we're getting into the ditch and wrestle with it, it's hard. Sometimes even disturbing. It can only be done through obedience to you and the power of your Holy Spirit. But we also stand on this promise that what you call, you, call, you also acquit. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you for being here this morning. We're, we're going to have a hymn of decision. We, we, during COVID, we do, are not having uh, an invitation time where people come down. But during this final song, we, we ask that you contemplate how God is speaking to you. Please stand, put on your mask, and we'll sing together. God bless you for coming to Memorial Baptist Church today. Now, now remain standing. We, we've got a, a, just a little piece of, of business and, and welcoming somebody uh, to our church. Wade Clark, would you come forward and any family members that would like to come here with him? Earlier in the service, you witnessed Wade Clark's profession of faith through baptism in Jesus Christ. You heard his profession of faith and that he is willing to follow Jesus Christ in discipleship for the rest of his life. Come up here, Wade. And uh, this is his mother, Jerry, right? And brother, Jet. Oh, I should, uh, Jet, I understand you can put away some groceries. Your, your grandfather's bragging about you. And this is Nate Crouch uh, as well. Me, uh, most of you know Nate. Uh, uh, Wade would like to join our church. Do I have a motion that he be welcome to the fellowship of Memorial Baptist Church? So moved. Bunch of so moved. All in favor, say amen. 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 And Wade, we have a special song that we want to sing to you. <laughs> for you celebrating your new life in Christ now because of COVID and this makes me very sad because of COVID we don't have a, a receiving line but but as, as you see him in the church as you go out or as you come forward or wherever you go uh, be sure and say some words of encouragement to Wade let's have a word of prayer Heavenly Father we come before you once again in the name of Jesus Christ and we go out as Christ followers people that seek to model their lives in the image of Jesus Christ. 
Father, empower us to do so. In your name we pray. Amen.